This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. So today we'll start with the percentage composition, and there will be some related problems to this concept. And then there will be empirical formula, molecular formula, and how these two are related to each other, and gram equivalent concept, and also some related problems. So here you can see this picture, which is uh, which we'll try to see before going to actual discussion related to percentage composition. So here you can see in this bracelet, there are a total 20 bits present, right? And different colors are also there. Now, if we focus on each color, total four colors are there. So out of these 20 bits, there is nine pink bits, then three light blue, six deep blue, and two green. Now, if we want to know percentage composition for each color of beads for these four colors then what we will do here it is mentioned that number of a particular bead for example if it is the pink one it will be nine divided by total number of beads now total number of beads that is already mentioned which is 20 so it should be something like this that is nine by 20 okay so now nine by 20 this ratio if it is multiplied by 100, then you will get this value, which is near about 50%. Because we know that if you consider 50% of 20, it is 10, but here it is 9. That means slightly lesser than 10. So that is why it is 45%. Not exactly 50, it is slightly lesser than 50. Similarly, if we want to know the percentage composition of the second color, which is light blue, then it will be total number of certain bits, which is 3 divided by total number of bits, which is 20. So three by 20, that should be multiplied by 100. So this formula we, we will use uh, for each time. And this is not just for this, if we, uh, that is, it is the general expression for percentage calculation, right? That we all know. Similarly, same thing you also have to do for the other two colors, six by 20 and two by 20. Now two by 20, we know it is one by 10, so that when multiplied by 100, it will be 10%, very easy. Now the same concept, if you apply for a particular compound, because when we are talking about a compound, there are different elements present in that particular compound, right? And percentage composition for each of these elements, suppose three elements are present, X, Y, Z. So percentage composition of X, Y, and Z. Three different percentage composition will be there. So how many elements are there? Uh, depending on that, different percentage composition will also be there. And same thing also we have to do. So when it is percentage composition for an element, just like this calculation we have done for B, same thing we also have to do for a compound. So mass percentage of an element, how we will do this calculation? It will be mass of that particular element in the compound, as you can see, that is mentioned here. So mass of that particular element in the compound divided by molar mass of the compound. That means the total mass of this compound. So if there are three elements X, Y, Z, the total mass that should be in the denominator. And again, it is multiplied by 100. So percentage composition of a given compound, how we can define it? It is defined as the ratio of that, of the amount of each element. There may be different number of elements, two, three, four, five, etc., to the total amount of individual element present in the compound multiplied by 100. So this is the formula. Here, the quantity that is measured in terms of gram of the elements present, and from this percentage composition, that is if we want to know what is the actual application of this percentage composition, why we are doing this calculation? There must be some purpose. So what is the purpose? The purpose is that if we know the percentage composition, we can understand what is the purity of a given sample. Okay. So suppose from the formula, you can understand that for a particular element, what should be the percentage composition. But when actual experimental value, if it is lesser than that, that means there is some amount of impurity. So that is why if we want to check purity of a given sample that we can do uh, that we can uh, have the idea from the percentage composition 
now we will take this particular example so if we see this idea will be completely clear okay here we have taken this molecule as you can see which is nicotine though detailed uh, structure is not required but i have just given it here for if you are interested to know how its structure is so this is pyridine ring and another heterocycle ring which is five membered containing nitrogen that is directly attached at three position with respect to nitrogen but here the actual thing that you have to know that is the formula so the formula is total three elements are present carbon hydrogen nitrogen okay 10 carbon atoms 14 hydrogen atoms and two nitrogen atoms so first thing that you have to do you should know what is the molar mass of the compound if we look at this formula each time when you will do the calculation for carbon hydrogen nitrogen each time this is required molar mass of the compound so for molar mass calculation basically chemical formula should be known properly and here we know what is the chemical formula so molar mass will be 10 multiplied by carbon that is the atomic mass of carbon 14 into hydrogen and 2 into nitrogen so it will be basically 10 into 12 okay so it is 120 similarly 14 into 1 for hydrogen and 2 into 14 for each uh, single nitrogen okay so 2 into 14 if we do this calculation you will find this value 162 so now we know what is the molar mass of the compound next thing percentage composition for carbon it will be 10 into 12 here it is written 10 c that means 10 into 12 that means 120 so 120 divided by molar mass which is 162 and then it is multiplied by 100 so same thing we'll also do for hydrogen and nitrogen for hydrogen it is uh, 14 gram uh, 14 into 1 which is 14 gram actually and divided by 162 8.6% okay and percentage of nitrogen 2 into n that means 2 into 40 which is 28 then 162 so here you can see these are the percentage composition for these three elements and just consider this last point it what it means actually so if it is 100% pure, then just choose any element. Suppose nitrogen. If it is 100% pure, suppose you have any sample of nicotine and we know from the formula that percentage of nitrogen is 17, near about 17%, right? But if somehow you know that it is lesser than that, that means whatever is the mass of sample you have, it is not completely nicotine there must be some impurity so that is why it is showing lesser percentage okay so in this way you can say this is also a type of uh, application of knowing percentage composition so we can check purity of any given sample if we know the actual uh, purity okay so based on percentage composition now some questions we we'll discuss The question is saying that a student has 12.864 gram of a compound. 5.68 gram of that compound is carbon. So out of 12.864, which is a mass of this compound, 5.68 gram is carbon. Then another value is given 6.779, which is gram amount of gram of the compound is sulfur that means sulfur mass is 6.779 and rest of the part is oxygen from this information you have to find what is the mass percentage composition so total how many elements are present here carbon then sulfur and oxygen these three elements are present right now you know what is the mass of carbon that is already given in the question you also know what is the mass of sulfur but you do not know what is the mass of oxygen but we can easily calculate it just add the mass of carbon and sulfur and you have to subtract it from the total mass of the compound in this way you can easily get the mass of oxygen so it, it is not given that is not a problem now once we know the individual mass of all these three elements percentage composition we can easily calculate so first thing that we have to do, we have to find the mass of oxygen. So that is why what we are doing here. 
this is the mass given for the total compound so we are subtracting this is the mass of carbon and the next value that is the mass of salt so we are subtracting these two masses from the total mass and we are getting this value so this is the mass of oxygen okay that is the first step you have to do now the second step is just you have to apply the formula percentage of carbon so it is the mass of carbon 5.689 which is directly given in the problem divided by the total mass and multiplied by 100 so it is 44.22 similarly mass percentage of sulfur so this value is already given in the problem divided by total mass and then multiplied by 100 and mass percentage of oxygen so this value we have calculated in the left hand side you can see divided by total mass so this is around three parts okay so these are the methods by which we can uh, get the mass percentage composition now this problem can be framed in option style so here options are not given but it may be that the uh, in each option a b c d different compositions uh, different mass percentage values will be given it may be that in one particular option two values will be matched but the third one may not be so in this way uh, the same question can be framed in option style also. okay next problem number of grams of bromine that will completely react with five gram of what compound this is an organic compound right paint one in iupac name is given here chemical formula is not given right iupac formula is given and from that formula you can easily draw the structure so once you draw the structure then from that structure you will be able to understand how many carbon how many hydrogen are there and why i am talking about only carbon and hydrogen just look at the name it is paint one in paint means total five car in means there is cc double one present so it is a hydrocarbon compound simply carbon hydrogen these two elements are present it is hydrocarbon no other substituents no other atoms are present okay so it is five carbon chain at one position there is cc double so that is why the name paint one e and the mass of the compound is given five gram okay now we know whenever we have any alkene molecule that is any molecule where cc double bond is present then it reacts with bromine molecule so here i have just taken any general structure uh, so there may be any substituent present in these four positions but actual reaction is this cc double bond now there will be only single bond so pi bond will be broken and in that position there will be two new carbon bromine bond formation so pi bond is now gone two new carbon bromine bonds are formed that means per cc double bond you need one bromine diatomic molecule that is clear from this reaction mechanism okay so number of grams of bromine that will react completely with five gram of this compound atomic mass of bromine is given and once you draw the structure of this molecule iupac name is given so when you draw the structure you can easily get the chemical formula and that form chemical formula you can calculate what is the molar mass of the compound that is molar mass of paint one in so once you know the given mass uh, sorry once you know the molar mass and given mass is already there which is five so given mass divided by molar mass that will give you how many moles of paint one in is present and from this mechanism that we i have just drawn one thing is clear that for one mole of cc uh, that is alkene molecule one mole of bromine is required so once you know what is the number of moles of this hydrocarbon same moles of bromine molecule will also be required and atomic mass of bromine is given that is for one particular bromine one bromine atom it is 18 
80 gram per mole. So when it is diatomic bromine molecule, it is basically two bromine. So it should be 80 multiplied by two. That is one six zero. So now look at this. The molecule we have here paint one in. So this is five carbon. This is one, two, three, four, five. But one and two position, there is CC double one. But look at the formula. From the structure, you can understand how many carbon, how many hydrogens are there. C5, H10. Reactive with bromine. Now this CC double bond is gone. You are getting two new CBR. What is the change in formula? This is the change. Though that is not required. It is simply given there. Now moles of bromine is equal to moles of C5, H10. That I have already mentioned, right? So if it is so, then W divided by 160. What is W? W is the amount of bromine that will react with 5 gram of this compound. So W is the mass of diatomic bromine molecule, not bromine atom, bromine molecule, divided by 160. So this that will give you moles of bromine molecule, Br2. And in the right hand side, moles of this hydrocarbon molecule, which is 5 divided by 7. Because 7, 0 is the molar mass you are getting from this formula. C5, H10. Now for each carbon, it is 12. So it should be 5 multiplied by 12. And from for 10 hydrogen, it is 10. That means mass should be 70. So given mass is 5 divided by molar mass, that means 5 divided by 7, 0. So from this equation, you can calculate the mass, the value of W, which is 5. Uh, you can say it is 5 by 70 multiplied by 160 or 5 into 160 by 70. It's same thing. So ultimately what you are getting, you are getting 11.428. Now look at the question once again. It is not enough that you are just calculating you have to express the final result of this calculation in this format, which is, uh, that is, there is a gap multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. And this value, which will be in this gap, that will be the nearest integer. Now, look at our answer. It is 11.428. And if you write this value in this format, so now the decimal is, two digit shifted towards right. So that is why now it is multiplied by 10 to the power minus two. Okay. So if it is 10 to the power minus two, now it is matching with the format that is given in the question. So if it is, suppose if it is X, then this is our X, 1142.8. But we have to take the nearest value. So that is why it should be 1142.8 so 0 0.8 we can write it if we remove this position 8 this digit it will be 1143 because 8 is greater than 5 so 42 that is now 43 so final result is 11.43 don't think this complete term is your answer no because the answer should be expressed in this format x which is the unknown value multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. So this is your answer, not the total term. Fine. So this is an integer type of problem. Next question. Now see, this is also integer type of problem. Fine. So what it is saying, it is a slight, uh, that is more information are there if you compare with the previous problem. So what it is saying, read the question very carefully. Even if it is taking time, you should read it carefully because so many, uh, that is, many informations are there, right? So what it is saying, two gram of a sample. The sample is containing manganese dioxide, MnO2. It is treated with hydrochloric acid. And in this reaction, what is produced? Chlorine is produced as gas. Now this chlorine gas, so this is the first reaction, MnO2 reacting with HCl, you are getting chlorine. Maybe there is some other compounds are also produced as product. 
but chlorine is one of the product and we are interested in chlorine only not in the other products now this product next step is now the gas is passed into a solution of potassium iodide that means the second reaction is kie reacting with chlorine so in this reaction there will be something that that is produced and this something we do not know right now i am not saying this the product of chlorine plus ki that product will react with 60 ml 0.1 molar na2h2o3 what is the name of this compound it is known as sodium thiosulfate sodium metal you can see na2 and h2o3 this anion is known as h2o3 2 minus this anion is known as thiosulfate so that is why i am saying the name sodium thiosulfate it is required to titrate the liberated iodine that means when ki is reacting with chlorine iodine will be liberated iodine will be liberated means here you can see iodine is present in the form of iodide i minus k plus i minus but after reaction with chlorine it will be converted to iodine and this iodine is reacting with nh2o3 so here initial value that is the mass of mno2 you know what is that is given 2 gram and finally in the third reaction what is the amount of nh2o3 though di direct mass is not given it is given in terms of volume which is 60 ml and concentration is also given so when concentration and volume is given you can easily uh, calculate the mass that you will also see so we know what is the amount of nh2o3 is required so from this information you have to find the percentage of mno2 in the sample that means mno2 sample is not pure that is the 2 gram that is given it is not completely mno2 some part of this out of this 2 gram is impurity so that is why it is asking the percentage of mno2 so these are the information some more informations are also given that you can see here and these are atomic masses of mn 55 for chlorine atom 35.5 oxygen 16 then we have iodine 127 sodium 23 potassium 39 sulfur 32 so all the elements they are atomic masses are so one by one we will see a uh, step wise uh, how to proceed so this is the first reaction now one thing i want to mention here that between the reaction of mno2 and hcl if you do not know what is the other product that is also fine but you have to balance this equation that is very important why it is important so we are interested in this product right but there are some other products also mncl2 and water but balanced equation is necessary so that we can understand for how many moles of mno2 we are getting how many moles of chlorine and that you can know only if the reaction is balanced and truly speaking if you um want to balance it you also have to know what are the other products so that is why here if we do not know what is the full reaction what are the other products it will be difficult for us to balance the equation okay so here from this balanced equation we can understand that for one mole of mno2 you will be getting only one mole of chlorine so it is one is to one so these two are related how one mole chlorine will be produced only from one mole of mno2 so this is the first reaction now this chlorine you are passing through a solution of potassium iodide so this is the second equation where chlorine is oxidizing i minus to iodine because here it is my uh, minus one oxidation state and here it is zero so it is oxidation but important point is again you have to balance this equation and from the balanced equation you can understand these two are related to each other how one is to one one mole iodine will be produced from one mole of chlorine and now the third equation this iodine now will react with na2h2o3 again you have to balance it fine so iodine reacting with two moles of na2h2o3 and these are the products but here this side is important i mean to say for one mole of iodine 
there should be requirement of two moles of Na2H2O3. Then only it is a balanced equation, right? So finally, the relationship is, if it is two moles of Na2H2O3, it must be one mole of iodine. If it is one mole iodine, it must be one mole chlorine. If it is one mole chlorine, it should be one mole MnO2. So finally, what is the relationship of these two? It is one is to two. So if it is two moles of NH2O3, it will always be half of uh, it. That is, moles of MnO2 will be half of it. Okay. Now here, let me erase all this. So here it is mentioned volume 60 ml and concentration. So very simple way to do this calculation. Just multiply the volume which is given in ml with the molarity 0 0.1. That is the concentration unit molarity. If you multiply it, that is 60 into 0.1, it will be 6. So when you multiply volume given in ml, concentration given in molarity, this value, its unit is millimole. So 60 ml 0 0.1 Na2H2O3, that is actually 6 millimole of Na2H2O3. And we have already seen in the previous discussion that I have done, these two are related, 1 is to 2. So when it is 6 millimole Na2H2O3, it must be 3 millimole of amino 2 right? And if you want to convert this millimole to mole, you have to multiply it with 10 to the power minus 3. Or you can say divide by uh, 1000. Okay. So whatever you do, it will be, that is 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 is 0 0.003 mole. Because we are converting from millimole to mole. So it will be obviously lesser than this, 1000 times lesser. So 0 0.003 mole MnO2 should be the amount of starting material. because the final volume of Na2H2O3 is 60 ml, concentration 0.1 mole. So in this way, if we move in backward direction, because the last reaction is Na2H2O3 plus iodine, but from this back and that is calculation, if you say the initial starting material MnO2, its amount must be 0.003. Fine. Now, you can easily calculate the molar mass of MnO2. How? You know Mn55. So 55 plus 16 into 2. Because two oxygen atoms are there. So you can easily calculate the molar mass. Once you know the molar mass and you also know the number of moles, if you multiply it, you will get the actual amount of MnO2. So let's see what we should do. Next step is you have to find the molar mass of MnO2, 87. So the percentage of MnO2, that should be 87 multiplied by 0 0.003. So this is the actual amount of MnO2. But sample mass is 2 gram. So actual mass divided by given sample mass multiplied by 100 and it will give you the final value which is 13.05. But as it is asking that nearest integer, it should be only 1, 3, 30 on. And one interesting thing is that if you look at this um, uh, problem once again, here mass of all the elements are given. But we have used only these two. Right? So don't think that if some information are given, always you have to utilize all of this. So here even we have not used the others. It is not required also. Because for each equation, if you do calculation, it will take a lot of time. That is not actually required. You just have to relate these two compounds, how that is, what is their mole ratio. So in this way, you can uh, reduce the amount of calculation, right? So finally, the answer we are getting is one, three. Because we have to take in, it is an integer type of question. So only nearest integer value you have to take. Next. Complete combustion of 1.80 gram of an oxygen containing compound. Oxygen containing compound means oxygen will be present. What is the molecular formula? CXHY 
OZ. X number of carbon, Y number of hydrogen, Z number of oxygen. So this is the formula. We do not know the value of X, Y, Z. But uh, from the formula, it is clear. Three elements are present. Now this compound is undergoing combustion reaction. Now combustion reaction means this compound that will react with oxygen. Okay. Now if it is combustion reaction of any hydrocarbon, suppose any hydrocarbon I am writing arbitrarily, formula is CXHY. So when it reacts with oxygen, in combustion reaction, two compounds are produced. One is CO2 gas another one is water but in our compound there is also presence of oxygen but these two will be produced only in any combustion reaction these are the products always now it is giving us 2.64 gram of co2 and 1.08 gram of water so this information is given so initial mass is given 1.8 and amount of oxygen we do not know final product masses are given but it is uh, okay what we have to find the percentage of oxygen in the ordinary compound so percentage of oxygen there are a total three elements you have to find the percentage of oxygen not the other two options are given now one thing is clear when it is one mole of co2 obviously it will be one mole of carbon because per formula of co2 there is only one carbon atom similarly when it is one mole of h2o it is actually one mole of oxygen okay now keeping this information in mind we will start the calculation so what we are doing here here it is mentioned nco2 is equal to nc so nco2 is number of moles of carbon dioxide which is equal to number of moles of carbon atom because part formula there is one carbon atom and it is 2.64 gram of carbon which is given in the question fine then divided by 44 so 44 is the sorry uh, molar mass of co2 so moles of co2 is 2.64 which is given mass of 6 co2 divided by molar mass given mass by molar mass that will always give you the number of moles of co2 so this is the number of moles of co2 but remember this is also the number of moles of carbon okay so here we can say if this is the number of moles of carbon so weight of carbon will be simply you have to multiply this number of moles of carbon with the atomic mass of carbon which is 12 so this is the mass of carbon or weight of carbon okay next we will find out what is the number of moles of water in 1.08 gram of water so this is the given mass of water and we know molar mass of water is 18 okay how it is 18 it is 16 for the one oxygen atom plus two for two hydrogen atom. similarly if you are interested to know how the molar mass of co2 is 44 one carbon atom that means 12 two oxygen that means 16 into 2 32 so it will give you the value 44 so number of moles of h2o is 0.06 now per moles of if i am saying that number of moles of h2o is 0 0.06 then number of moles of hydrogen atom must be double because per formula of h2o there is two hydrogen atoms okay so this is the number of moles of hydrogen 0 0.12 so weight of hydrogen would be it is same because it is simply multiplied by one so now we know what is the mass of carbon atom what is the mass of hydrogen okay and you also know what is the mass of uh, the total that is the compound that we have taken cxhyoz 
So next, what we will do? We will subtract these two values that we have just calculated from 1.8 because 1.8 is the mass of total uh, compound that is C X H Y O Z. Okay. So from this 1.8, we'll subtract these two values that we have calculated. So basically, we are trying to find out what is the weight of oxygen that you can only get if you subtract the mass of carbon and hydrogen from the total. Okay. And uh, this weight of hydrogen, though we have calculated it in water, but try to remember the combustion reaction. The product carbon dioxide and H2O that you are getting in the product side, the source of carbon is obviously the CX and the source of hydro, uh, water, source of hydrogen in the water. This hydrogen is only coming from this molecule. So that is why when I'm saying weight of C and weight of H, that is actually the weight of C and H in this compound. So that is why if you subtract it, you will get the weight of oxygen. Now it is already, that is we are almost at the end of this calculation. Percentage weight of oxygen, it is 0.96, which we have calculated here, divided by the total mass, 1.8, multiplied by 100. So this should be the correct answer. Okay. Our next topic is empirical formula and molecular formula. We know what is molecular formula, but this new term that you are seeing, empirical formula that you have to know. Elemental analysis of a compound. That means if you have any compound, different elements are present. When you are doing elemental analysis, that will give you the mass percentage of all the atoms present in the compound that we have already uh, seen in the last few problems that you have discussed. Now, using this mass percentage, we can determine the empirical formula. Molecular formula of the compound can be arrived at from the empirical formula using the molar mass. So if you know the empirical formula of any compound, and if you know the molar mass of that compound, from these two information, you can calculate or you can understand what is the molecular form. So look at this table. Here we have the molecular formula C3H6O3. So total three elements are present, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Now, if you simplify these numbers, that is the ratio of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, 363, which is basically one is two, two is two, one. So from this simplest ratio, the formula that you are getting is CH2O. Okay. So if you know the molar mass, suppose the molar mass is capital M. Okay. That we do not know. And empirical formula you know. Now from this empirical formula, you can also calculate what is the mass of carbon, what is the mass of hydrogen. So it is 12 plus 2 plus 16. Now if you add all this, you will get some value. Now, the, this value is obviously lesser than the actual molar mass. So, molar mass, that is capital M, divided by the mass that you are getting from empirical formula. If you take this issue, you will get some whole number. Because we have taken here the simplest ratio. Okay. So, it should be uh, three times more. Because we have reduced it, that is the 3 is to 6 is to 3. If you divide by 3, then you are getting the uh, simplest ratio, which is 1 is to 2 is to 1. So it is. it should be 3 times less. So the mass that you will be getting from empirical formula, that will be 3 times less from the molar mass. So you will always get a whole number. In this case, it is 3. Look at the next formula. Molecular formula is C10H14N2. But you can simplify it. Divide all these values 10, 14, 2 by 2 because 2 is the minimum number. So it will be 5, then it will be 7 and 1. So this is the simplest ratio 5 is to 7 is to 1. So that is it is the empirical form. And the last one is interesting. Here you cannot simplify it further. 
So that is why here empirical formula and molecular formula both are same. Okay, and the ratio of mass and that is molar mass divided by the mass that you are getting from empirical formula. This will give you the value simply one because both side formula is same. So this is the difference between molecular formula and empirical formula. Now, as a definition, we can say molecular formula of a compound is the formula written with the simplest ratio of the number of different atoms that you have already seen in the table present in one molecule of the compound as subscript to the atomic symbol. So atomic symbol C, H, O, you can see what are the subscript we have used. And when you simplify it, you will get empirical formula. And molecular formula is, it is a formula written with the actual number of different atoms. But in the empirical formula, you cannot get the actual number. It is a simplest ratio. So that is the difference between empirical formula and molecular formula. Sometimes it may be same if you cannot simplify it further, but sometimes it may not be so. So molecular formula, uh, from the molecular formula, the mass you will be getting and the mass that you will be getting from empirical formula, if you take its ratio, it will be a whole number. Fine. So here we'll see how we can do it. Empirical formula, how we can get it from percentage composition. So suppose percentage composition is given from that information, how we can reach to the empirical form. Here three elements are present, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Percentage given in the next column, molar mass of these three elements. Basically in this case, uh, better you say atomic mass because they are individual atoms we are considering so atomic mass of carbon we know it is 12 for hydrogen it is 1 for oxygen it is 16 and if we divide this 32 4 and 64 with this we can get the relative number of moles so 32 percent of carbon is there if you divide this mass uh, percentage with the atomic mass of this element you will get some value here we are getting 2.66, then 4 divided by 1, it is 4. 64 divided by 16, it is also 4. Now, 2.66, 4 and 4, choose the minimum one, which is 2.66. So, divide all these three numbers by 2.66. So, the first one, it will be the same, so it is 1. Next one is 1.5 and 1.5. But we need the simple whole number. So that is why if you want to change this fraction to whole number, what we are doing here, multiply each of these numbers with two. So one into two, it is two. 1.5 into two, it is three. So for this two, it is three. So in this way, the simplest ratio in the whole number that you are getting is uh, C2, H3, O3. So in this way, you can reach the empirical formula. Okay, and it will always be uh, that is this ratio will always be maintained whole number you will always get if you take molar mass of the compound divided by uh, formula mass that you are getting from empirical form. So it will always be a whole number. Now some more calculation we will see. So here what empirical formula you are getting 233 three for carbon hydrogen oxygen. Now with the same empirical formula, different types of compounds may be there. Though this table that you are seeing now, here it has nothing to uh, do. That is the first two example that you are seeing. It is not the same empirical, empirical formula with this that we have just calculated. It is only the second one. So look at these three, uh, these two examples. What we have here, we have benzene and we have tartaric acid. So benzene and tartaric acid, if you take the empirical formula, it is like this, C and H. Because benzene, this is the structure. And benzene formula is C6H6. But if you take empirical formula, it will be C and H simply one, one. So from this, 
empirical formula, the mass that you are getting is 78. Okay. And another one, tartaric acid is C2H3O3, which is matching with this one. So from this, we are getting empirical formula mass 150. Uh, sorry. Sorry, one minute is whatever I'm saying, it is for the next column, not this one. Consider this column, empirical formula mass. That means carbon and hydrogen. So it is 12 plus 1, 13. Then C2H3O3, that means 12 into 2, then 3 for hydrogen and 3 into 16 for oxygen. So if you do this, you will get 75. So in this way, for lactic acid, this is the empirical formula. For acetic acid, same empirical formula. So from obviously, the formula mass, empirical formula mass will be same. Okay. But actual molar mass of acetic acid is 6, 0. Actual molar mass of lactic acid is 9, 0. Okay. So here, though empirical formula mass is same for both acetic acid and lactic acid, but molar mass is not same. Okay. So that is why when you are doing this calculation, that is this calculation, you are getting 2 for acetic acid, but you are getting 3 for lactic acid. So if it is 2 and molar mass is given, sorry, form, empirical formula mass is given. So if you multiply it, you will get the molecular formula because 60 divided by 30 it is 2. So empirical formula must be multiplied by 2. And you are getting the actual chemical formula of acetic acid, which is C2H4O3. So acetic acid, if I am writing, we write it in this way. Here you can see how many carbon atoms are there? 2. Total hydrogen 4, total oxygen O2. So in this way you can find out molecular formula provided uh, the molar mass of the compound is given because formula is not given here you are finally finding the molecular formula so empirical for, uh, molar mass must be given empirical formula must be given then only you can find out molecular formula or suppose if molecular formula is given molar mass is not given then also you can do this calculation so any one value is unknown, the other value should be known. Then only we can do. Similarly, for lactic acid, here also empirical formula is same, but you are getting a different whole number. When you are multiplying it with this one, it will be C3A6O3. That is lactic acid. Then for tartaric acid, when you are dividing molar mass uh, with the empirical formula mass, you are getting 2. So that is why 2 is multiplied with this empirical formula. And for benzene, 78 divided by 13, 78 is the molar mass of benzene, which basically we can get from this. So already we know it, though that is why I have written it here. But you can do this calculation in this way. As you are getting the whole number 6, so 6 should be multiplied with this empirical formula. So now it is the ratio, simplest ratio is 1 is to 1, but now it is 6 is to 6. Okay, so in this way, if empirical, uh, that is, if formula, molecular formula is given, empirical formula is given, you can find out what is the molar mass or vice versa. That is any one value, if it is missing from the other known values, you can find the unknown one. Okay. So here we have this integer type of problem, which is based on based on uh, this discussion okay so it is saying 116 gram of a substance upon dissociation dissociation reaction 75.5 sorry 7.5 gram of hydrogen 60 gram of oxygen 48.5 gram of carbon so how many elements are present? Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon. These three elements are present. Atomic masses of these three atoms are given. 
one for hydrogen 16 for oxygen 12 for carbon though it is always better if you can remember this because these are so basic and mostly we will uh, have to use it frequently so it is better you remember the atomic masses of some basic elements basic means uh, i mean to say carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur like this okay so from this information from these data you have to find how the these data agrees with how many formula of the following here four options are given but it is not option based question from these four formula you have to just check out of these four formula how many formula are actually uh, it is it is obeying the data that is given here here mass of individual atoms that is hydrogen is given 7.5 so percentage of hydrogen it must be 7.5 divided by total mass multiplied by 100 so now this is the percentage of hydrogen similarly you can find out what is the percentage of oxygen same calculation so percentage composition we have discussed in the past slide right into discuss and percentage of carbon so these are the values so here what is the minimum one it is 6.5 now we have to arrange these values in such a way so that we can get the simplest ratio you can do it in different way for i am uh, trying to say you can simply divide each of these by 6.5 that also you can do if you do so that is one way or if you simply here follow this calculation that is shown here here what you are getting you are getting that the ratio of hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, it is around, that is, you have to take the nearest integer. It is 6.5, 3.253. But if you take the nearest value, as if it is 6, 3, and 3, that means carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The ratio, the simplest ratio, that should be, 3 oxygen 3 this is 6 so this is not simplest simplest will be 1 2 1 so it is c h 2 o this should be the empirical formula so this empirical formula it is matching with which of out of these four compounds with which it is matching that we have to check okay so if you consider the first term which is basically acetic acid how many carbons are there it is c2 h4 o so here simplest ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 sorry it is 2 so it is matching with our data now for the second one this is also matching see it is one carbon two hydrogen one oxygen so it is also matching so this also we should consider but the third one it is c2 a6 O2. So it is not matching because here the ratio is 2 is to 6 is to 2, which is not matching. 2 is to 6 is to 2. If you take simplest ratio, it will be 1 is to 3 is to 3. But that is not simplest ratio. Our simplest ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Okay. And so this is not correct. And the last one is C2 H4 oxygen. Simplest ratio is uh, actually this is a simple you cannot simplify it further two four one okay so that is why out of four how many formulas are ag agreeing with this data it is only two a and b so that is why our answer will be simply two this should be that fine now we are almost at the end of this session one question we can discuss okay we have some time left a compound is composed of 74% carbon, 8.7% hydrogen, 17.3% nitrogen. So three elements are present. Their percentage composition also given. From this, you have to find that determine the empirical formula of the compound. Molar mass is given, which is 162. It is option-based question. 
you can see in the four options in all the options carbon hydrogen nitrogen present that is fine but their atomic simplest atomic ratio that is different okay so from the percentage composition first step is 74 8.7 and 17.3 all these should be divided by the corresponding atomic mass that is 74 should be divided by 12 8.7 by 1 17.3 divided by 14. so from this table you can see these are the percentage composition which is already given in the question these are the atomic mass as i have i have said these basic atomic mass values you should remember because in this problem no atomic mass values are given so you have to remember it on your own okay 12 1 and 14. so from this if you divide this percentage by the atomic mass you will get these numbers now choose the simplest one uh, that is the most smallest one 1.2 so divide 6.2 by 1.2 8.7 by 1.2 and 1.2 by 1.2 so what you are getting 5 7.25 and 1 but sim if you simplify it, that is the nearest integer of 7.25, it is 7. So it should be carbon 5, H7, and only one nitrogen. So it is matching with this one, not the other one. So that is why this should be the correct option. So some more problems we will see. But we are end of this session. So we will end here. Thank you for listening.